I think apps are getting much more important now. When they first came out, uh, uh, they were like mostly game apps. Uh, we all remember playing Angry Birds on our phone, right? Uh, today, people do play games and you know, a uh, couple of days ago, I think Supercell got acquired for $5 billion. Uh, uh, so, you know, game apps are important, they are games and all that, but there are also like a lot of life critical apps. Uh, and I would not put the, the cab apps as like, life critical, but you would use them when you are, you know, stepping out of office or maybe home and you want to hitch a ride, you will use that app. So it's not just casual, uh, you know, usage anymore. These are like critical usages. So I kind of saw the transition, right? When again, 2006, uh, you had the Nokia phones uh, with 11 rupees and incoming minute, like very expensive and all that. Uh, and by the time 2009 and 10 rolled in, there were some apps again on the Nokia platform. I don't think so. Android had made its presence yet, or it was probably largely ignored platform. Uh, apps were beginning to get, as I said, like you know earlier, uh, there were a lot of games, etc. But apps were getting to become more critical. Uh, for the simple reason that when you're out and about, you have your phone with you. You don't necessarily open a laptop on a crowded street, but you can always, uh, you know, uh, open up your tele uh, phone, mobile phone, and you can go look up, uh, you know, anything that you want. Uh, so we saw the transition happen, and as as life got more and more dependent upon an app, uh, we saw a fairly significant amount of people coming in, uh, you know, through traffic coming in through the apps. So we kind of missed the boat on the app. We were so consumed by the whole web world. Uh, it took Nokia to get in touch with us and said, you are one of the leading uh, websites you know, of India. You're very popular and all that. Uh, when we are launching this new phone, uh, and we'd like to feature you as one of the apps on the uh, phone. And, uh, and that's when we woke up to the whole app ecosystem. Uh, they said, we'll support you. We'll give you design help. We'll help you figure out how to make an app. Because an app is a very different form factor. The real estate is limited, the space is limited, unlike a browser website where you have the mouse and you know you have uh, you can take a printout and all this. You can't do all that stuff in the app. Uh, how do you show pictures? Do you put a video in there and all those things? Uh, so with their help, we kind of launched our first app, which was on the Nokia phone. Uh, and then I think a couple years later, we came up with our first Android app. Again, like you know, a lot of other people started making apps. Uh, I think ClearTrip was the first one of them like you know, to make an app and when we saw other people making apps and the apps getting popular, that's when we decided to jump in. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, we key learnings were from the Android as well as the iOS app. Uh, what we did was to save time, we used the same designs over. So, we had a designer design the screens for the app on Android. And then we took the same designs and put them on iOS. Uh, and the iOS app bombed uh, because uh, the form factors, while the phone might look the same, but the way you interact with your app is very different on both the platforms. Uh, for example, Android uh, phones come with a back button, whether it's a logical or a physical button. But there's this concept of hitting back and going back right to the previous screen. Well, in An iOS, there is no such concept. You have to uh, there has to be a navigational element on the screen itself which tells you to go back. The moment you hit the home button, you kind of out there on the home screen. So you're thrown away from the app. Uh, so that was one of the lessons we learned. We realized that early on, I think by the time the second, third version rolled in, we knew that we had to design separately, have separate teams, and the way people will interact with the app and the way these elements work, as we call them the native uh, elements of each platform, is very different. And we need to adhere to the rules of that platform. I think so. Uh, one, it's, uh, uh, you know, I'll go back to the hiring statement. I think it's very hard to find good uh, Android developers or mobile app developers. Uh, one, because, you know, while it's easy to make an app, like a one-off app, but you gain experience only after you've made a few apps. There is so much diversity of apps that are out there, or there's so much diversity of the devices that are out there, especially for Android. For example, you have on one end the very uh, uh, cheap devices, which are low memory, and they come with like limited specs. On the other side, there's the, you know, the Samsungs of the world making high-end devices, uh, kind of almost competing with an iPhone, uh, you know, the latest version of an iPhone. Uh, and you, your app, you can't have an app for different versions of different phones, right? You have to have the same app that kind of works across uh, the spectrum. 
uh, again, like hiring is hard because uh, how would you like as a developer, unless you spent a year, number of years doing that, very hard for you to, uh, you know, build for all uh, different uh, device uh, quirkinesses. So, uh, you know, we start, funnily, uh, uh, that's what people remember us for today, but we started off as uh, web analytics. Uh, for the first six, eight months, we started, you know, we wrote this first JavaScript version of uh, you put this in your website and data will start flowing in. Uh, and then we got selected for Y Combinator interviews, uh, which is an accelerator based out of the US, one of the top ones. And we went there and they said, well, you know, the world is moving towards mobile and you guys have made something for the web. And that was like the second, you know, uh, like deja vu moment for us. Uh, we threw away whatever we had written, came back and we then wrote mobile analytics uh, because uh, as I said, like a mobile app or a mobile device is a lot more personal than even the personal computer. Uh, and as people now, like, you know, when they build apps, etc., like, you know, they're super focused on getting like the uh, mind share of the user. They want to figure out how are apps being used and so on and so forth. Uh, and that's when we decided to focus on uh, mobile app analytics. And this is a much harder space because these devices are out there unlike a PC environment in which you know you either have connectivity or you don't. You may have a mobile device but you may not have connectivity. It might not be available, uh, you might be offline, you might be in a remote area. There are all sorts of use cases you ought to consider. It's, it starts off with, you know, someone either sending us a resume, uh, like a cold, you know, incoming resume or a referral by one of the people that we know that work for us, right? Uh, and once we get a resume, we look at it, highlight the skills that we kind of care about or, you know, uh, what has the person done in the past, all that stuff. Once we know that stuff, then it ends up with a phone screen. So the first round typically is the phone screen where we just do a basic communication check, like, you know, how does the person sound on the phone? Uh, uh, you know, what were the reasons for, you know, looking around and so on and so forth. So basically soft skills. Just basic soft skills like, you know, just like, you know, can we understand what the other person is trying to say. Then we bring the person over and then we do a couple, three rounds of uh, quick interviews. Okay. Uh, where one, we test for aptitude. The other thing is we test for uh, uh, the ethics of the person also, right? Like we are like a bank vault. We hold everyone else's data. Uh, we better hire the right kind of people, right? So mindset-wise, they have to be sharp. They also have to play well with the team. Uh, teamwork is one of the top traits of anyone that I look forward to hire. We need a good team player. We can't, I can't hire an Albert Einstein, like, you know, if he likes to work in isolation, uh, not happening with me. Uh, we need persons to come solve problems because these problems have not been solved before. Like, you know, we're trying to do things that have not been done before. Uh, come work for us, you know, solve these problems and be part of a team that solves this problem. We don't focus on syntax and what Java version you worked upon or specifics of an API that you used in the past. Those things can be learned. What you can't teach someone is uh, fundamental stuff. So we interview people on fundamental, foundational stuff, right? Uh, if they've done computer science before, we ask them computer science specific data algorithm uh, questions. If they've not done computer science, we test for general aptitudes. Like, can we introduce a concept to them? And how quickly can they grasp the concept and come up with answers, right? Like in Burp, one of my favorite questions was, uh, how do you store operating hours of a business in a database? Now you don't need to have studied computer science to come up with an answer, but everyone that solved that question on a whiteboard would get hired by me. Uh, so that's something as simple as that. So sitting before you is a non-tech uh, who's been doing tech for 25 years. Uh, don't be disheartened if you didn't get selected into IIT or into computer science or whatever. Uh, I'm a second class BCom graduate and I very proudly write it everywhere and tell it to everyone that cares enough to listen about it. Uh, what you need to do is get a lot of experiences in life. And that doesn't necessarily mean going out and doing things. It can also mean like writing a lot of programs. Uh, today it's much easier like you know back in the 80s when I started it was much harder. There was no YouTube back then. There was no Coursera or upgrade for that matter. Uh, it was very hard for us to go, you know, we used to go buy, sorry, not buy, rent really fat books on programming from the British Library. Uh, today, from the comfort of your home, you can put on headphones and listen to a computer science lecture from an MIT professor. 
it become much easier now but get more experiences do write short programs throw them out there put them on github uh, you know uh, ask a friend to use your product like you know go there's so many problems being uh, waiting to be solved uh, get those experiences and today you can prove that you know by writing something by demo uh, by demonstration uh, so uh, the theory part is like you know sit back and read up something or understand how it works and the practical part is to actually say that my code is actually on github and there are uh, you know 2500 people using it uh, those kind of people i would hire in a blink so uh, uh, during my school days i unfortunately did not have a good mentor but uh, during my uh, uh, my professional career i was always very very lucky to get good bosses uh, people who would not treat me as an employee but would think of me that you know hey uh, can we give an this opportunity so that he can kind of you know take this role up uh, i think having a mentor is very very important uh, because mentors mentors are people those who have already been at a place or are at a place where you want to go and they they have traveled through the road before so go find a mentor and uh, find a right mentor again like you know i can talk for half an hour about like getting the right set of mentors once you have a good mentor uh, make sure you follow the mentor's advice question your mentor also uh, the roads might be the same but the circumstances might be different uh, but to answer your question like you know i think mentorship is very important absolutely uh, uh, uh number one like do stuff uh, you can read up about swimming but you can't learn how to swim unless you jump into the pool uh, so you can read up all about computer science and how to write the best code and what not but unless you write a piece of code and it sees light of the day uh, you have not uh, done it so i would say tip number one would be to do stuff write small pieces of code write different kinds of code be curious about things uh you know and just keep uh, keep doing stuff uh, i'm a big believer in doing things versus uh, uh you know just uh, reading up about them uh, so i think that's uh, that's what it is cto is not an impossible role every cto uh, was a developer once uh, it is really about the number of years of experience and the kind of stuff you have done it's always not always about the number of years like you could be the same thing again and again for 20 years and you know you'll be at the same place it's a diversity of experiences so in the same company if you have been a part of a project try to figure out what else could we have done like you know or try to look back and say if we had to do this thing all over again how would we do it now uh, get the benefit or like you know do a retrospect on the project uh, that you just delivered is there a better technology to do it Uh, read up a lot about stuff uh, try to go be pallies with your boss try to figure out what is what does day his day look like right his or her day look like uh, what are the challenges they face can you be uh, can you help them problem solving those challenges if you can you are already working on your way up there because once you get there these are your problems also you'll have the same set of problems your circumstances might be different uh, so number of years of experience diversity of experience uh doing that extra bit like you know it's not like oh it's you know my code compiles on my laptop and once it's done and i'm done for the day right uh, go ask around maybe other team members need your help if you're generally available if you're generally a good guy good teamwork guy you'll go up to the top so uh, again the range varies a lot uh i would say anywhere from uh, uh maybe 6 lakhs per annum right if you work for a good startup all the way to 12 lakhs per annum uh, you could be a fairly senior guy in the android scheme of things and android developer doesn't necessarily mean that you're writing code all the time it could also mean your responsibility is to deliver this piece of app in production uh, and you have to take care of the entire life cycle of the uh, project uh, not quite a project manager but still being a developer like you know you're the main or the lead developer so it varies i would say I think that's a great option. Uh, there are not too many freelancers back, uh, you know, a decade ago. Uh, I've seen a lot of freelancers work being very, very successful in the U.S. Uh, I used to work with quite a few of them. Uh, freelancing basically is like you know you are uh, a hired actor for a movie. Once you finish the role up, you find the next assignment. But while you are on it, you are fully committed to that project. You have to make sure that this works. 
I think of it like that very simple way to think about it uh, I think uh, freelancers get the diversity of experiences because at the same time they might be handling multiple projects don't overcommit yourself uh, it's anyway a bad idea but have enough on your plate so that you know you can get the experience required and you can also keep all your projects happy so since you mentioned re-entering the workforce right I think uh, this is like catching a train, right? You can't be stationary when the train is moving, right? You have to run along with it and then catch it. Uh, so use your downtime or your off time, I would say, to learn about the latest things. Uh, uh, again, like, you know, writing software doesn't require a lot of hard work, physical hard work. Uh, you can be seated on a table with a chair, get a laptop and just write code. It's straightforward. Uh, if you show that you are willing to come halfway, a lot of companies will make the other halfway happen. They'll say, okay, we have seen that you've put in effort, like, you know, come on in and we'll see what, where it goes. Uh, so use that, like, uh, re-entering is harder uh, because circumstances change in tech, things change way faster than, you know, even before. Uh, but I would say practice and do things and show, demonstrate something like, you know, that the other company will appreciate. Uh, and then you can probably find it easier to get inside. Fundamentally, you know, it's the same thing. It's, uh, you know, uh, we, it, it's all about computing and then different use cases for computing. Uh, not, phone is nothing but a fancy computer, right? Now, the use cases are you could order a cab, you can play a game, you can call other people, you can do whatever you want to do with it, right? Uh, but bottom line, it's a computer. Once you understand the fundamentals, uh, you can see through the changes. You can kind of predict what's going to happen next. Okay, and it requires a lot of experience. And you would have seen a lot of cycles to kind of know like, you know, where the next one is headed. Uh, I would say don't uh, be afraid of change, embrace change, whether change is going to happen, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have phones uh, a decade ago, like, you know, when the, the kind of phones that we have now, right? They're called mobile devices, they're not even called phones anymore. Uh, and they might go away also in the next 10 years, who knows? We'll have wearable, we'll be wearing glasses and it'll all happen in virtual, virtual reality and all that. Uh, embrace change. Be ready for change. Don't date yourself. Don't be the master ninja of this one little thing. Because that thing will go away. So try to get a broader perspective. Turn, try to learn newer things. A uh, lot of companies have this early access or a preview access or beta program. As a developer, they'll ship you the development kit. Uh, get access of that. Uh, the US companies also ship stuff to India. Uh, order it, get access and do it. Great question. I wrote a blog post about it. Oh. Uh, one, when you come in to interview, and this was for the burp days, kids are a lot smarter now. Uh, you know, you come in for the interview, we just make you feel relaxed. So one of the emails that we send out, like, you know, to when you invited over, is that dress in casuals. Do not wear a striped shirt. Do not show up in formal shoes. You know, it's okay, man. Do, we are, because we are not, uh, the, the shoes that you wear or the shirt that you wear is not going to help you, like, you know, think about problems. Uh, so be in a relaxed state of mind. When you, you are in a relaxed state of mind, you can think through problems. You can figure out answers. And the people that who are going to interview you are going to sit with you and solve problems with you. They are not going to ask you questions and hope that you solve the problem. Because that's how teamwork works. Uh, if we do not know the answers, we'll ask you the question. But work with you to solve the uh, uh, answer. Get to the answer. Uh, so the tips to youngsters would be one, don't be nervous, it's okay and if you're feeling nervous just tell to the other guy, hey it's like a bad day for me, I am feeling nervous, uh, I'll probably have a glass of water uh, or give me five minutes, I'll just walk in the corridor, come back and you know maybe I'll be prepared better. Uh, it's better to say that you're nervous, acknowledge the fact, than fumble through an interview and make the other guy think that maybe you did not know what you already knew. Uh, again there are humans on the other side, uh, you're not talking to machines. Uh, they all understand, they've all had a nervous day when they were starting out. Uh, aspiring Android developers, uh, life is going to get a lot more exciting. Uh, I think we're entering a phase where the platform, Android platform specifically, will not only be available on the phone. Uh, there are smart TVs out there, there, is, there are watches, uh, there'll soon be you know, glasses and whatnot. Uh, you will have to develop for this multiple form factors. There's Internet of Things also where you know your uh, Android OS might show up. 
So things are getting excited. Be on top of the curve. Try to figure out what's happening next and be there versus where the you know the rest of the people are fighting like you know because it's like a proven platform. So get to the next thing in life and you shall be sorted. Let me think about this. Uh, one, I would say you have to know uh, your APIs, you have to know the code, you have to be a master of what, how to make the app. Like that is fundamental, correct? Two, you need to write good enough test cases, you need to test your app, you need to make sure that it works in low memory devices, it works in areas without network, it works in, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, different kinds of form factors, the phone with smaller screens, bigger screens, with Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi and so on and so forth, right? And the third is generally be very good at communication. Uh, communication, although it's a very important skill, it's grossly underrated, I would say. People who don't, who can't communicate with the rest of the team members, team members start ignoring that person. So communicate, you know, if you're having a bad day, tell it like that. If you are stuck with the problem, I would be the person to raise a red flag right away. Go ask a teammate, people who are more experienced, go take their advice. Uh, they're not going to hate you for it. They're going to like you because it's okay to ask questions.